Multiplication of radicals. Remember when we were simplifying, we used the product rule, and we were here, and we could break this product down into radicals with the separate factors. Um, now we will be over here in a multiplication form, and we can put them back together. Um, numbers that are on the outside of the radicals will multiply, numbers on the inside of the radical will multiply together. Also recall that if you multiply the square root of something times the square root of itself, that is just going to take the radical off. This can save you some time if you remember this. We could always work it out. It would be square root of x times x, but then you have two copies, and so one goes outside the radical. Let's look at some problems. First we have square root of 5 times square root of 15. We could go ahead and just multiply the 5 times 15 and we would have square root of 75 and then we would need to simplify. Another thing that you can do is just write them under the radical and then you will break them down rather than multiplying them first. So we can break down the 15 so we have a 5. 15 is 3 times 5. Now, if you have two copies of anything, that is a square. So you could take one outside for that group, and the 3 is left. That will simplify your radical rather than going to 75 and then breaking it all down. For this problem, we will need to multiply the numbers that are outside the radical and the numbers that are underneath the radical. So first of all, negative 2 times 4 will give us negative 8. And underneath the radical, we have 5 times 6 is 30. We could try breaking that 6 down to 2 times 3, but we didn't get anything that simplified. So we could have just left it as 30. We'll put it back to 30. So that's our simplified answer. Let's look at this problem. 2 times the square root of 8 times 3 times the square root of 2. So we will multiply the numbers on the outside, 2 and 3, to get a 6. Right? We have two choices for the radicands. We can multiply those together and then simplify, or we could break down as we go. If we multiply them together, 8 times 2, is 16. 16 is actually a perfect square. The square root is 4. You can take the 4 and do times the 6 and your answer is 24. An alternate way is to break down as you go, which you don't always get a perfect square there. So we could break down for 8, we've done that one a few times, it breaks down to 3 twos. And 2 is already a prime. When you have those all together though, it gives you 2 squares underneath there. So um, square root here, we will take 1 2 out, that's the square root of 4. And square root here, we will take a 2 out. They will multiply together and will multiply by the 6. And that will also give us 24. Next we have one radical times a sum of radicals. And this is just going to be a distribution problem. So we'll multiply that square root of 3 times each of those. So for our first one, square root of 3 times 5. Even if we put both of those under the radical side by side, they're not going to simplify. Uh, we can't get two copies of anything. So it's just going to stay as the square root of 15. Right? Next we do the square root of 3 times the square root of 10 gives the square root of 30. We could try to break 30 down. We could do 3 times 10 and 3 is prime, and 2 times 5. So that's broken down all the way. There is not anything to give a square there. So we will just go back and we will stop at the 30. These two radicals will not combine. Here is another distribution problem. So we're going to take the square root of 2x 
times square root of 2 and then times minus square root of x. So when we do the first one, we get square root of 2 and another 2 and an x. The 2's make a perfect square, it's 4. So square root of 4 is 2 or just take 1, 2 out for the group of 2's. Keep the x, it doesn't have anything to go with it. When we distribute to the second term, we get a 2 and we have 2 x's. The x's make a square, so 1x goes out for that group. The 2 is left, and that is our simplified answer. Next, we have two terms times two terms. Um, this will give us a FOIL problem. So we'll multiply our first terms. 2 times 3 will give us a 6. We'll multiply outside, and this 2 will multiply the, by the 2 that's on the outside of the radical. So 2 times 2 is 4, and you're going to keep the radical. Inside, the 3 will multiply times the negative 5 to give negative 15, and you're going to keep the radical. And then our last terms, the numbers outside the radicals will multiply to give a minus 10. And inside, you have square root of 2 times square root of 2. If you remember, when you multiply the same square root times itself, the radical will come off. So it will give us just a 2. And now we'll clean up. This is a minus 20. So our constants can go together. And that will give us a negative 14. Our radicals can go together because they are like radicals. They are uh, different signs, so we're going to subtract sine of the larger and keep one copy of the radical. We have another problem with two binomials, and so we will do our first terms. Uh, the 3 will multiply, it would be a 1 outside here, so it's going to be 3. We have square root of 7 times square root of 7 is going to take the radical off. This will give us a 21. Then we'll do outside. Our 3 here will multiply by the 3 on the outside of the radical. So 3 times 3 is 9 times the square root of 7. Inside, minus 2 times the square root of 7. And last, minus 6. And then we will clean up. Uh, 21 minus 6 will go together to give us a 15. And these are like radicals, so they can combine. 9 and a minus 2 will give us 7. And you keep the radical. Be careful on this next one. You are squaring a binomial because your plus sign in between. You're not allowed to just take the two down to each one. So what I will do is just I will write it twice. And then we'll do a FOIL method. So we'll multiply the first terms. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 will give us just 2. It will remove the radical outside. We will get 5 times the square root of 2. Inside, we will get 5 times the square root of 2. And last, 5 times 5 will give us 25. Your constants can go together. Uh, 2 plus 25 will give us 27. And our radical terms are like radicals. Uh, we will work with the Two fives outside will give us 10. Keep one copy of the radical. We have another problem where we're squaring a binomial. So I will again write it twice. Square root of 2 plus square root of 6 times square root of 2 plus square root of 6. All right? For my first terms, 
square root of 2 times square root of 2, the radical will come off. Outside, uh, square root of 2 times square root of 6. We'll go ahead and just multiply these for right now, but then we'll clean it up. Gives us a square root of 12. Inside, we're also going to get a square root of 12, 6 times 2. And last terms, square root of 6 times square root of 6, the radical will come off. All right, my 2 plus 6 can go together to give 8. Um, the square root of 12 will simplify to 4 times 3. And if you realize there 4 is a square, you can take the square root or you can break it on down and see that you will have a 2 come out. So it will be 2 times the square root of 3. The other one will break the same way, 2 times the square root of 3. And I've already combined the 2 and 6. So these two can go together. You work with the numbers outside to give a 4 times the square root of 3. Our next multiplication, it is two binomials, uh, but these have the opposite sign. These are called conjugates. Uh, let's see what happens when we multiply these. We're still going to do a FOIL method. So our first terms, um, the 4's will multiply on the outside. 4 times 4 is 16. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 will take the radical off and give us 16 times 5, which is 80. Outside, we get minus 20 times the square root of 5. Inside, you get plus 20 times the square root of 5. And last, we get minus 25. This is the special thing about conjugates. This outside and inside are going to cancel. So I have 80 minus 25 will give me 55. We are multiplying two binomials here. So this will be a FOIL technique. So we'll do our first terms. Remember, when you take the square root of something times itself, it will just remove the radical. So this will give us 5x. Then we'll do outside. So the minus 2 is outside. It's going to stay outside times the square root. And then we multiply things that are inside. So 5x times 2x is 10x squared. Then we'll do inside. So the minus 3 is outside, so it will stay outside. And 2x times 5x will give us 10x squared. Right? And then we'll do our last terms. So our numbers outside will multiply. A minus 3 or negative 3 times a negative 2 will give us a positive 6. And the square root of 2 times the square, square root of 2x times the square root of 2x will just remove the radical. All right, now let's clean it up. And we could have simplified here by taking the x squared out, but we'll go ahead and just combine first. So this term we can multiply. 6 times 2x gives us 12x. It is going to combine with the 5x to give us 17x. And these two are like radicals, so we do the math on the outside. So it will be a minus 5 times the square root of 10x squared. I haven't simplified that yet. And then 10 we cannot break down. It breaks to 2 times 5, so no square in there. But we can simplify for the x squared. So we'll take the square root of that, which is just an x. So 1x goes to the outside. So 17x minus 5x times the square root of 10. Let's look at one last problem with the multiplication. This is also two binomials, so we will use a FOIL technique. And we will do our first terms. 4 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. So we'll keep the 4. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 will take the radical off to give us an 8. 
um, outside. The 4 times negative 2 will give us a negative 8. And square root of 2 times square root of 3 will give us a square root of 6. Inside, we have a minus 6 on the outside. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 will give us square root of 6. And then our last terms. Uh, the two negatives will give us a positive 12 on the outside. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 will pull the radical off. And 3 times 12 gives us a 36 there. So 8 plus 36 can combine to give us 44. And our radicals are like radicals. Um, we will add and keep the sign. So minus 14 times the square root of 6.